guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Yasser Ahmed. So in this video, we will we will be looking at chapter two, input and output devices, and we're going to be focusing on 2.3, output devices and their uses. So please check out the previous videos where we, where we have looked at um, input uh, devices and also direct data entry devices. So now we're going to be focusing on 2.3. Um, we'll start off by looking at the CRT monitor. So output devices, output data. And there's two uh, devices that we want to look at. Um, so you've got the CRT monitor and then a flat screen. Okay. So let's have a look at the CRT. So I think this is probably now phased out now. So we don't see as many CRTs as we, as we used to. Now is um, obviously it's more popular to have um, a flat screen. Okay, and why is it more popular to have a flat screen? So the CRT is normally or was used as a primary display for computers, especially when I was younger. I used to have a, a big CRT monitor taking up a lot of space on my desk. Um, the advantage of having a CRT monitor is it's cheaper than other monitors and can also be used with light pens. However, um, due to its size, it's going to consume more power. It's likely to overheat and as mentioned, takes up more desk space and is not ideal for eyes for long periods of use. So this is obviously what a desktop computer used to look like a long time ago, probably when I was in school. Um, okay, so now flat screens. So these flat screens, sometimes you'll have a dual screens, you might have more than one screen, have taken over from the CRT as a primary output display for computers. Um, the obvious advantages are it's smaller and lighter, so less desk space is required. It consumes less power and does not generate as much heat as the CRT monitors. Can be more expensive compared to the CRT monitor as well. Okay, so some fairly obvious advantages and disadvantages to these um, devices. Um, we're also going to be looking at the touchscreen. So the touchscreen, as mentioned in a previous video, can double up as an input device as well as an output device um, because you're using your fingers to scroll or to zoom in or to click on icons or press on icons. So yeah, a touchscreen is an input device as well as an output device. Uh, users can interact with the screen by using their fingers or a special stylus pen. Um, you'll use a touchscreen mostly with a mobile phone or tablets. Um, the tablet, uh, so the laptop I'm using now actually has a touchscreen, so I'm just highlighting this using my finger. You'll also find touchscreens at terminals at point of sales or banks, um, stations. You know, for example, if you're at a train station and you want to purchase some tickets, so you might be using touchscreen. Um, I don't know, don't want to highlight that. Let me just. Okay, so the advantage of using the touchscreen is there's no need for additional input devices since you can select options using your fingers. Uh, there's no need for additional buttons. Menus and interface are generally very easy to use and you can zoom in and rotate as well if you had to. However, the disadvantage would be the screen could become d damaged, dirty and less visible over time. Um, if your screen was damaged, for example, you had lots of fingerprints, dirt, then it may not be responsive. Uh, difficult to input high volumes of information compared to using a keyboard. So let's say, for example, you're writing an essay. It would be better to use a keyboard on a desktop or a laptop computer rather than trying to type in using a touchscreen uh, keyboard. Um, right, let's look at a projector now. So multimedia projectors are used when projecting signals from various uh, devices to a larger screen so it could be you want to project the contents of your tv uh, your computer or even now your mobile phone to a larger screen so where are these devices used um, the obvious uh, place that you might see them is in a classroom offices in a training presentation home cinema systems so what does a projector do is it's basically able to project onto a big screen allowing more people to see the output Users can gather around to one screen and it can be a main focal point in a classroom. Uh, the disadvantage is when you are projecting an image, uh, the output resolution may not be the same quality. Um, obstacles could affect um, or could block the projection and it may be expensive to purchase and to maybe difficult to set up as well. So you'd have to position this projector in a certain place 
uh, to get the picture to you know be as clear as possible and to be more visible to as many people as well. Okay, so now let's have a look at um, some printing um, devices. Um, we have an inkjet printer and a laser printer that we're going to be looking at. Uh, both are high quality printers, um, so it can print out good quality pictures. Um, obviously, we have differences between the two. So with inkjet printer, this is useful and most commonly used in the home environment where it's not necessary to print high volumes of uh, printouts. So maybe if you printed one or two pages here and there, an inkjet printer would be ideal for that purpose because it can print um, to a decent quality, high quality. So inkjet printers are used when low output volumes are required. Um, for example, home use to print homework or single pages images. So the inkjet printer, um, the advantage is high quality printing. It's cheaper to buy compared to laser printers. It's smaller in size, so it takes up less de uh, desk space. However, um, the ink cartridge may run out quickly and can be expensive to replace. And the printing is much slower compared to a laser printer. Okay. But now let's look at the laser printer. So again, the laser printer can give us high quality printing, but this is more useful when we need to print in high volumes. So for example, in our office, or school environment, I'm sorry, or for example, when you guys are doing a paper two exam and you're printing off from databases um, and you're printing off your reports, obviously you can imagine if everyone's printing at the same time, you don't want to be waiting for an inkjet print and printer to print each page. You want to use a laser printer because the printing would be much quicker. So the advantage, again, high quality printing, the same for inkjet. However, the printing is faster, especially when printing high volumes. The toner, which is like your cartridge, lasts longer than the inkjet cartridge. It may cost more money initially, but obviously it'll give you more printouts. And it prints quietly as well. So with the inkjet printer, you get the, the inkjet, uh, the, the print head moving across the page and the paper being fed through the pay, uh, printer. And this obviously prints much quicker and much quietly as well. The disadvantage would be the laser printer is more expensive to buy. Uh, it would take up more desk space. And the color laser printers, color laser printers are more expensive to run compared to black and white laser printers. So when would you use a laser printer? Maybe in a school office environment when you are printing in high volumes and you obviously you want your printouts to be at a good quality. Inkjet printers would be useful if you just need to print a few sheets at home to a decent standard. Um, dot matrix printer. Um, this actually used to be my first printer when I was uh, when I first purchased my uh, desktop computer. And now you still see these um, dot matrix printers, not for personal use, maybe at a point of sale, uh, POS, uh, to print it off uh, receipts or maybe airline tickets or when duplicates, uh, carbon copies are required. So dot matrix is a type of printer which uses a print head which presses against an inked ribbon whilst moving back and forth. So the paper will be fed through the printer and the, um, the print head will be moving back and forth. So when would you need a dot matrix printer? So it's basically, um, you'd need it if you're just doing basic printing. So like a receipt as mentioned here. So we're not going to be printing high quality images. So just maybe when you need a little bit of text, it could be an invoice printing. So the advantage of using a dot matrix printer is it's not affected by hot and dusty environments, can print carbon copies. So this is useful when additional copies need to be um, signed. So what that basically means is, um, let me just go to um, here. Um, let me just type in here, carbon copies. So you can see what that looks like. Uh, images so you'll see you get different colored paper like this and since the, the print head is pressing down it also um, the output will be shown on these other pages as well so then you can keep the first copy for yourself and maybe give a second copy to your client or customer okay and it's cheap to run and maintain however the disadvantage would be it's very slow at printing it's poor quality printing so only useful if you're just printing off text 
and is noise, noisy, noisy compared to other printers. Uh, you also have the plotter, and the plotters are used when you are required to print in large formats. Okay, so for example, printing banners, billboards, signs, posters, uh, used in photography and art. So you can see the pictures here. So a plotter would be very expensive to buy and maintain. However, the advantage is you get high resolution printing compared to laser and inkjet printers. Um, you get large printouts. Companies are able to print in-house, which is cheaper than asking another company to print. So these would be used um, when you are looking to print off big posters, for example, billboards, which can be displayed outside. So let's look at an, a typical exam question. So discuss the advantage and disadvantage of using a laser, inkjet, plotter, and a dot matrix printer. So notice um, I've got the highlight, the keywords highlighted. Um, there's lots of connectives in there to expand my points as well. So let's go ahead and read out um, my answer. So laser printers can provide fast and high quality printing. Don't say laser printers are just fast, you need to be specific. Typically, laser printers are used to print in high volumes. However, the printer will be more expensive to buy compared to an inkjet printer, and also the toner will cost more. The inkjet also provides high quality printing. However, however, it prints much slower than a laser printer, and therefore is normally used when printing in low volumes. The plotter printer are used to print very large printouts in high quality. The plotter printer will typically be the most expensive printer to purchase and maintain. The advantage of a dot matrix printer is that it can work in hot and dusty conditions and can print carbon copies. However, the printing quality is quite poor compared to the other printers. In addition, the printing time is also much slower compared to the laser and inkjet printer. So you can see the key parts of the question are in, in yellow. Uh, there's lots of connect connectives to extend the points in my answers. Okay, and let's now look at 3D printers. So 3D printers can produce solid objects by building layer upon layer. So you can see the 3D printer can be used for many different purposes. Um, so obviously it's going to be a 3D object as you can see um, in this, these pictures here. So um, maybe we're making new limbs or manufacturing new parts or medical applications or construction. Um, I've seen videos on YouTube where they're designing houses or printing off houses or post offices using 3D printers. So the advantage to a 3D printer is products can be customized, prototypes can be created very quickly, parts can be created which are no longer manufactured, artificial organs can also be created. However, the disadvantage would be counterfeit products could be created, dangerous objects could be printed if used inappropriate, inappropriately, and it's obviously very expensive, you know, when you get the materials. And also the printing time is going to take a long time to print off something. Okay, so speakers, um, obviously, you probably all know what speakers are. Um, they're basically required to output sound, essential, essential for video conferencing, movies, uh, cinemas, computer gaming, etc. So speakers can be used wirelessly using Bluetooth technology or can be plugged directly into your computers. The sounds can be amplified. Surround systems can give a more realistic experience. So this is the speakers are basically used to output sound, uh, not as personal compared to headphones and can be heard by everyone. And an underpowered amplifier playing at high volumes can damage a speaker. Okay, so this is the last part. Okay, so actuators, and this is part of the measure and control um, environment. Um, so in a greenhouse, for example, if we have sensors taking temperature readings, uh, moisture readings of the soil, light, um, we want to maintain conditions. If one of these conditions, let's say temperature has gone too cold or it's gone too dark in your greenhouse, the actuator is the output um, of part of the control process. Uh, digital signals are, set, are sent by the computer to the actuator to affect or control the real, real world environment. So for example, uh, we have motors, a buzzer, a heater, and a light. Um, so let's say for example, a buzzer, um, you're in your car and you're trying to park your car and you get too close to 
an obstacle or a wall or to another um, car, then the buzzer will go off to alert you to stop and do something. Because if you keep going, you're going to hit into another car. Uh, but let's start off with the motor. So the motor is used to spin things around. So it can be used in washing machines to control fans, control robot arms in manufacturing. Um, maybe in a greenhouse, for example, if it's got too cold, so too hot, the motor can be used um, to open up the windows to let some cool air in. Uh, a buzzer, as mentioned, um, could be used in burglar alarms, microwave ovens, and other household appliances. So, for example, if you microwave any food and you come to the end, um, let's say you set it to 30 seconds and you come to the end of the 30 seconds, then you'll hear beep beep to alert you. Um, your food is ready, should be warmed up. And sporting events or in game shows, um, maybe to signify game over, time's up. Um, obviously, um, maybe a smoke detector in your house as well. Um, if smoke is detected, then the buzzer will go off to alert you. Um, the heater, so to increase temperature, to control heat in the central heating system, uh, to control heat in the greenhouse or heat in the oven. So these are some examples. And lights. These could be security lights in your home. So if someone approaches your front door, the light, and if it's nighttime, the lights may come on. Uh, on your car dashboard to alert the driver, for example, of low fuel or low pressure and tires. And maybe the street lights will turn on automatically when it gets darker and lights in a greenhouse. Right, guys, so we've come to the end of 2.3. So please check out the other videos where we went through 2.1 and input devices. And we also went through 2.2 direct data entry devices. So I'm hoping these videos are useful. Please check them out. Please share them with your peers and drop your comments below. Like and share, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you. Bye-bye.